Fred here of Madden Engineering. This is our second video uh, on how to program the Texas Instruments TI-83 Plus calculator. Okay, and in this uh, video, if, in this class, if you're, you know, depending on the university that you go to, if you're allowed this type of calculator in this class, but personally for us, we took a class that was called Computer Aided Structural Analysis. Okay, and half the course was dedicated to the matrix stiffness method uh, of evaluating beams and frames. Okay, we were allowed to use these. And without this, and without programming this method into your calculator, it was almost impossible to pass the course. Okay, you would have run out of time on one question in the final exam. So uh, this is a really important way. I'm gonna show you how to program uh, the structural stiffness matrix of each member into your calculator. So all you have to give is E, I, and L, and you will get K uh, for each um, and global, and in the case of beams, it's going to be global and local K are the same. Uh, in It'll give you uh, uh, the output matrix and it'll store it in the matrix uh, letter of your choice. So, with that being said, if you have a, if you have a newer version, this should, it, the programming should be pretty much identical, okay? Any Texas Instruments calculator. With that being said, let's go ahead and let's get started, okay? So, as you'll notice um, in the top left here, uh, I've just uh, left the formula for K for, uh, for the structural stiffness matrix, okay? You can use exactly the same method that I'm using here for, uh, for frames, for the K, for local and global, okay? Those are, you know, six by six matrices. Here we're only gonna be working with a four by four matrix because it's a beam, okay? If you wanted to do it with a frame, you use exactly the same method here. You just have to change the dimensions a little bit of the matrix, okay? So let's go ahead and let's get started. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit faster in this one. If you don't know uh, the basics of programming in here, go back to the video that I did on interpolation. I explained the basics of using the calculator in that video. Okay, so we wanna make for a program that's going to calculate the matrix of a, a structural stiffness matrix for the beam. Okay, so uh, you can call it whatever you want. Let's call it mat beam. You can call it whatever you want, as long as you know that, um, and, and what I do suggest, uh, when you go to the exam, it's, this is probably gonna be an open book exam, I would, uh, I would write down the letter uh, that it's stored in, it corresponds with what matrix on a piece of paper, and I uh, bring that so that you're not you know, confused as to which matrix is getting stored in which letter, you have it written down here, you look in your paper and you know where, you're, what, you know, where your matrix is going. So if we take a look at uh, on the top left here, we have K is equal to EI over L cubed times, and in, in the matrix we have, um, inside of the matrix we have a four by four, and we have some, some constants, and then we have some, some numbers multiplied, well, by constants, which is L, but by uh, some inputs that we're gonna need to provide. So uh, we want first to prompt for E, for I, and for L. Okay, so we want the calculator to ask us for E, I, and L. That's gonna be our first step. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start by going to program, we're gonna display, and we're gonna ask for E. And what I like to do personally is I don't like to mess around with the units, okay? I want the program to, pro to prompt me on which units to put in. And uh, usually the pro problem will give you uh, your modulus of elasticity and GPA, your uh, moment of inertia in me uh, millimeters to the fourth and you also usually get length in uh, meters, okay? So what I like to do is I like to get the program to ask me for those units, and then I can do the operations on all the units in the calculator after. So just to make sure that everything is working, and I make all the calculator do the conversion. I don't do the conversion because, you know, that, that just makes it easier on me when I'm in the exam situation. Okay, so, so I'm gonna ask prompt for E, okay? And I'm, I want to prompt for E, and I'm just gonna make a space here. I want to ask uh, for E in GPA, okay, in gigapascal. So I'm just going to make sure that I ask, uh, you know, that that shows up so that I'm never getting confused, okay. So now uh, what I want to do here is I want to store E in uh, in a variable, okay. So I'll just call it E, okay. So let's prompt and let's store that variable in E, okay. Now. E is in GPA, okay? So we wanna work with, uh, the units that we're gonna wanna work with here are kilonewtons, and we're gonna wanna, wanna work with meters, okay? So in order to convert 200 GPA to kilonewton and meter, okay, we're gonna multiply by 10 to the six, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do, we'll just have the calculator do that for us, and it's really simple, okay? Is now that uh, E and GPA is stored in E, we're gonna take E, 
we're going to multiply it okay, by 10 to the power of 6. Okay, we're going to multiply it by 10 okay, to the power of 6. We're going to take that and we're going to store it in E. Okay, so what we've done is, uh, just by doing this here, we've taken E, the initial E, we've multiplied it by 10 to the 6, and we put it back in E. So essentially we've just converted that to kilonewton and a meter unit. So let's go ahead and continue. Next we're going to want to prompt for I. We almost always get I in millimeters to the 4th. Okay, so we're going to prompt for I in millimeters to the 4th. Okay, so we're going to say display. We're going to do our quotations. We're going to say I, moment of inertia. And we're going to make sure that it also tells us what unit to put it in so there's never any confusion on the test, okay? Perfect. So let's go ahead and do that one there. Okay, and prompt. We're going to prompt, and that is going to be super simple. We'll put it in I, easy. Okay, and now we want to convert millimeters to the fourth to meters to the fourth. Okay, so like we did before, uh, we're going to work with I, no quotations or anything. Okay, and we're going to, how do you convert millimeters to the fourth to meters to the fourth? Easy. Divide by a thousand to the fourth. Okay, and we're going to store that in I again. Okay, so what we've done there is we've converted millimeters to the fourth by meters to the fourth, and uh, the calculator has done it for us on its own. We haven't had to do anything, so we're making our life easy here. Finally, we wanted to prompt for, or display for the length of our member, okay? So let's go ahead and say length. And we'll just say L, right? Space, sorry about that, space. And we're going to say that's in meters, okay? You can do this however you want, just make sure that you know what you're supposed to be putting in and in what units. That's where things can go wrong here. We're going to prompt for L, okay, and we're just going to store that there, and L is in meters, so we don't need to do any unit conversion, okay? So everything we have here is in kilonewton and in meters, all right? Now we're ready to move on to the matrix part of this, okay? And uh, first, before we get to the matrix part, okay, we want to perform the operation EI over L cubed in the top left here, okay? And when we perform that operation, we want to store that in a single variable, okay? And it's going to be easier to program later. So let's go ahead and put that in, okay? So it's really simple. We can just go E, okay, times I divided by L, right? L is to the power of 3, okay? And we're just going to go ahead and store that. Let's just store it in. You can store it in anything you want. We're going to store that in X, okay? So EI over L cubed is now equal to X. So now uh, we're going to want to go ahead and clear a matrix of our choice, okay? We're, we can just choose matrix G, okay? Um, but what you want to do is you want to take the matrix and you want to initialize it. So if there's anything in the matrix, you want to get rid of it and you want to make it all zeros so that you're not getting any random numbers in that matrix that maybe were there before uh, that might mess up your problem. So this way you're starting with a clean slate. Okay, so we go to program control and you're going to go to del var. Okay, uh, so click on del var. Okay, and del after del var, what you're going to do, okay, is you're going to select the matrix that you want to delete, essentially, okay? So that how we're, we do that is we go to second function in matrix, and uh, let's just pick matrix G, okay? So we're going to pick matrix G. You can store it in any matrix you want, but I suggest you write, you know, matrix G uh, is beam matrix or something like that on a piece of paper so you don't get confused. So now we're going to assign uh, matrix G to be a new a 4 by 4 matrix, okay? And we're going to say, you just use the store button, Okay, and with dimension G, okay? So don't worry too much about what that means. Okay, uh, second function, matrix, go to math, dimension, okay, of, of dimension G, okay? So if you don't understand that, that's fine. If you want a six by six matrix, do exactly the same thing, but just do six comma six, okay? So now uh, with that matrix initialized, we're now ready to start putting variables, the equations into the matrix, okay? So that the calculator does it for us. So let's go ahead and start with that, okay? So right off the bat, let's start with the first uh, column and the first row, okay? So let's start with the first column, first row. We have 12 there times EI over L cubed. If you'll remember before, we put EI over L cubed into X. So all we need to do is type X times 12, right? Because 12 is constant here. And that stores in 
go to second function matrix. We're going to store that in the matrix G. That's our matrix that we initialized. Okay, and bracket one, one. Simple. So that's going to put that into matrix G in the first column in the first row. And all you have to do from this point on is just fill out, okay, each row in each column. Okay, it takes a little bit of time, but you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes right now is going to save you a lot of time during the test when you, all you have to do is type four buttons and it gives you the whole matrix in two seconds, okay? Let me just go to this program as well that I have over here, okay? I already have this program done. And let me just show you the rest of the inputs, okay? Because uh, I don't want to type them out, it takes too long. So let's go to my Beam program, okay? And essentially we have exactly the same thing that we did there before, okay? And uh, so as you can see, for the second, second column, first row, I have x times 6 times L, and I'm storing that in the first row, second column. And then uh, the next uh, entry, so the first row, third column, okay, as you can see up here, is negative 12, okay, I just you put the negative anywhere, times x. And as you can see, I, what I've done here is I've just put every single column, every single row, every entry in here, okay, so the calculator is doing all of these operations, and it's storing them all in matrix G. So, go ahead and now let's test this program out, okay? So let's test it out, and let's go quit. We're going to clear. We're going to go to program. We're going to open up our Beam program, okay? And let's see what happens. So, okay, we're asked to provide E in GPA. We have 200 GPA. Let's put it in, okay? Uh, we have I, all right? I is given in millimeters to the fourth. So we're going to say 270 times 10 to the sixth, okay? Uh, what's L? So for let's uh, let's try and evaluate the K matrix for, for member one. Okay, so the length is three meters. Okay, you know you'll get a number here. Well, what do we do now? Well, so we simply go to the matrix and we go to the ma the letter that we stored it in, which is in seven. That's in G. Okay, and by pressing enter, what we're given is the the stiffness matrix of me of member A, member one. So uh, yeah, what we could do is we can just take a look here. We can scroll around. Okay, and, we're, and this, is, uh, this is what we're given, okay? And, and once we're given this in the test situation, really after it's just about plugging in numbers, okay? So uh, take a look at the other videos we have on how to do the structural stiffness matrix method, if you're, if you're unaware of that. But this is a really great trick that you can uh, use to program any matrix, really. Um, and one more hint, uh, make sure, okay, that you go into your book after you've written this program and you plug in some of the numbers in the book Okay, and you make sure that each one of these numbers is exactly the same as what the book gives you. Okay, you need to confirm that your, your formulas are correct because if you've made a negative or a positive error or something in here and this is wrong, your whole question is going to be wrong and the professor is not going to help you out with that. That's going to probably be a zero if you get this wrong. So really make sure that every single entry is exactly correct. Okay, and uh, that's all guys. I hope uh, you learned something from that. Thank you so much for watching and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.